I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the blessings of this Easter season and pray that you will bless us with your presence through your word this day. For you ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, today we are looking at one of the coolest lessons during this season of Easter that we get the opportunity and privilege of reading. Acts chapter 8. I love this story. It's a story about Philip. But let me start by saying this lesson goes really well with the gospel lesson from Sunday. Because the gospel lesson was Jesus telling his disciples about how he is the vine and they are the branches. And how when they're rooted to Jesus Christ, when they're connected with Jesus Christ... Of course, the vine is connected to the earth. It's nourishment. It provides nourishment for the vines uh, and for the branches, and the branches then will produce fruit. The fruit, of course, that he is talking about is that all who are disciples of Jesus Christ will produce other disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the fruit that we will produce. We will be a blessing to this world. I'm convinced that we have really missed in some ways an opportunity to be a blessing over the course of this last year. It's been difficult for us, but I think many in the church have decided to fight political battles rather than being a blessing to the world, and therefore we've missed the opportunity to touch and transform lives. Well, we can correct that. And so today is our opportunity to stop fighting these political battles because they're of, 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 tertiary, or they're of tertiary importance. They're not important. Not really, not in terms of our future and our relationship with Christ. The most important thing are these eternal struggles. The relationship that people are to have with Jesus Christ, how he wants to touch and transform people. And so we're going to actually take a look at Phil today. And I want you to keep this in mind. Philip is going to be interacting with a man who represents a queen called Candace from Ethiopia. She's long dead and gone. The politics of that country are long dead and gone. But the story of this man's transformation stays and remains. So how unimportant were the politics and the importance of the politics in that man's day in life several thousand years ago? And so I'm telling you, whatever you're battling for today is so unimportant compared to the relationship that we are called to share with others the relationship of Jesus Christ. So let's take a look at this lesson. Cool. Great lesson. So an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Philip again, who was he? Philip was uh, one of the disciples of Jesus who became an apostle. Remember the other week we mentioned what is an apostle? An apostle is a follower of Christ who had a physical experience or uh, with a resurrected Jesus Christ. So there are no apostles today. There are people who call themselves apostles, but they're technically not apostles. That's just a brand or a title they put on themselves and they pat themselves on the back, I guess because they think they're somehow special. An apostle was very specific to the followers of Jesus Christ who physically followed Christ, who physically had an interaction with the resurrected Lord and therefore went and proclaimed the gospel, the good news. So that's who Philip is. He's one of the apostles. All right. So the angel of the Lord, a messenger of the Lord, said to Philip, get up, go south to a road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. It's a wilderness road. Now, I, you know, there are actually three different roads that travel down from Jerusalem uh, to the south and going towards Egypt and so forth. And, you know, you had the King's Highway that was on the, uh, that would have been on the west. And then, of course, you had the one that traveled right along the coast on the Mediterranean Ocean. Those two were very well traveled. And by the way, the King's Highway is still a real physical highway today. But right in the center, right in the wilderness, in the middle of nothing, it was sometimes a quicker journey to go that way. But there were a lot of robbers on that path. And, oh, by the way, it was a rougher path, and there weren't many towns. If you ran out of water, if you needed help, you were kind of in deep trouble if you ran down that center path. Well, this is the path that Philip is taking, at least what it looks like in the scripture today. The wilderness road, out in the middle of nowhere. So Philip got up, and he went down. And there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. So 
again, I mentioned you the politics. Those politics of Ethiopia are long gone. Who cares? And here we are fighting still battles about politics today. Who cares? They aren't going to matter. Not 10 years from now, not 20 years from now, not 100 years from now. What's important to Philip is not the politics or the country from which this man comes, although that's pointed out to show you how far the good news of God disseminates, that no longer is it just for the Jews. So here this Ethiopian eunuch, why does it mention he's a eunuch? Well, you know, it was common and officials of those days that, uh, uh, that I guess they thought if you were a eunuch, you didn't have any other loyalties to anybody else except for the person to whom you were bonded or, or to whom you served. So here he is, a eunuch, nevertheless. He's serving in the court of the queen of the Ethiopians, Candace. And he was in charge of her entire treasury. Okay, so he had no family to whom he was going to take money and give it to them. And that's kind of the reason for that. So he came to Jerusalem to worship. Well, what would have been around this time? Uh, remember, it is still, at this time, the season of Pentecost. Whoops, Pentecost. I can spell that. That is 50 days, by the way. After what? Hmm. Well, from a Christian perspective, it's 50 days after the resurrection. Okay? But this is a Jewish... Uh, this is a Jewish holiday, so it wasn't 50 days after Christ's resurrection. They're not, they're, that's not what they're looking at. It's 50 days after, hmm, what would it be? The Passover, okay? Oh, goodness, I can barely write today. So 50 days after this Passover, so Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover, and so he was likely there in Jerusalem to worship. He had probably been a convert to Judaism, it was not unknown, especially in the South, for them to have a, a deep relationship with uh, Israel. Remember, Israel was really a nice hub. It was a metropolitan is uh, area, Jerusalem in particular, metropolitan city. Everybody passed through Jerusalem. So it was a big, bustling, powerful town that people would often travel through. And people were influenced and affected by Judaism and so forth. And so the religion was, you know, the Jewish religion may not have been large, but it disseminated throughout the world. But this man, this Ethiopian eunuch, eunuch was returning home. So again, he came there for Pentecost, likely. He was returning home. He was seated in his chariot. Oh, wasn't he a wealthy guy? <laughs> okay, he had a chariot. He didn't even have to walk, and he certainly wasn't riding on the back of a horse, which would have been uncomfortable. They didn't have saddles like we do today. Okay? So... He was seated in his chariot. He was reading from the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit said to Philip, the Holy Spirit, of course, go over to his chariot, join him. So here's Philip. He's minding his own business. He sees this guy reading a book. What the heck? It wasn't a little book. You know, this had to been a scroll. So it's a scroll of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is a huge scroll. This is a big, monstrous thing. Okay? So he goes over to Philip to his chair. Philip goes over. Philip ran up and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip said, do you understand what you're reading? The eunuch replied, how can I unless someone guides me? So he was affected by Judaism. He heard the readings at the season of Pentecost. He wanted to devote himself more deeply to God. And Philip was provided to give him the answers that he needed. Isn't God good? It's amazing. So the man, the eunuch, invited Philip to get in and sit beside him, and the passage of Scripture that the man was reading said this, Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. Like a lamb, silent before the shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? His life was taken away from the earth. Now, you have to understand, this is a passage from Isaiah that has its own context separate from Jesus. We Christianize it, we make it about Jesus, because that's what Philip does. 
And I think there is a sense that this is a, a good illustration of who Jesus is and what he came to do. But this passage means something separate from this context. And so uh, he was sitting here struggling, not even thinking about Jesus. And that's kind of my point to this. So this man wasn't, you know, he could have gone to Jerusalem and not even heard about this Jesus guy. Okay? Because, again, he was a Jew, a convert to Judaism. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? That's a really good question. Whenever you look at the scripture, you ought to be curious. I think sometimes we Christianize things. Again, we need to take a look at what is the context, about whom is this passage referring, so that we use the scriptures appropriately. But Philip, he began to speak, and he started with this scripture and proclaimed to him the good news. Remember how in the last couple of weeks we have determined that the good news is very simple, okay? That we are saved by what? By name, by the name of who? Jesus. There you go. That's the good news. We Christians make it about so many other things. If we're proclaiming another message other than this, or more than that, or adding to it, or telling folks that they have to do this, this, and this, and this, before they can get this, we are not proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. The disciples kept it really simple. And that's why they had such a, such a profound effect on the lives of people around them. Because they kept it simple. They didn't make it about their politics they didn't make it about their systematic theologies. They made it about the name of Jesus can bring you healing and salvation. That's it. What a great news that is. So it goes on. So Philip began speaking, starting with the scripture, proclaimed the good news about Jesus, the name of Jesus. And as they were going, uh, that was it. That was all it said about what Philip shared with him. About Jesus. He shared about Jesus who Jesus is, how Jesus fits this lamb who was sacrificed, kept his mouth shut, willingly took this indignity of the crucifixion, but how the good news is, is there's a resurrection on the other side, and there's salvation through this. That is the gospel message. It is such good news. And so what happens? The eunuch, as they go along, they came by some water, and the eunuch said, look, here's some water. What's to prevent me from being baptized? And so he commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water. Philip baptized him. Kind of a cool story. And so he understood that God was making, the eunuch understood that God wanted to make a claim on his life. He said, I want this claim. I want to be a part of the kingdom. And baptism is... Uh, the way that this was done, okay, by the early Christians, by us still today. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. How did that happen? Boom, did he disappear like a ghost? I don't know. The Bible doesn't say that. It could have been, look, I got to go, and they just went their separate ways. And to anybody who is visually watch, walking this, you know, after the baptism was done, Philip just said, I got to go. I got other places I got to be. Or it could have been a miraculous thing. It really doesn't specify that. I think we make it a miraculous thing. And it certainly could be. I don't have any problems with that. But let's not read more into the scripture than what it tells us. It just says, he was snatched away. The spirit snatched him away. It was time to go. You know, it's kind of, uh, you know, when I would, uh, my daughter was a little bit younger, and we picked her up at daycare. I snatched her away. Was he, she just miraculously just disappear? No. It's just, it was time to go, and we got to go. We grabbed her, and we go. Okay? So I don't know what this would have looked like, and it really doesn't matter. The point is, is God had another agenda for Philip because he had done the work here with this Ethiopian eunuch. He planted that seed. That seed came forth into fruit, fruition. And a disciple of Christ in this Ethiopian eunuch, and he was going to go back to Candace and tell her all about it, I'm sure. All right? So the, the spirit snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more. They parted ways. But he was rejoicing. I'm sure he's sad. I'm losing my friend Philip. But you know what? It was a short-term relationship. 
Aren't those sometimes the best? You have these, these itinerant interactions with people that you'll never see again. But sometimes they're such valuable and inspirational relationships and we take advantage of these opportunities. It's amazing what can happen. This is what Philip did. Okay. And then Philip found himself in Azotos, and he was passing through the region and proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea, which is in Philippi, okay? Uh, the Philippians, you might remember that book, uh, Paul's book to the Philippians. All right, so I just want to point out a couple of additional things here about this, and this is about the itinerant nature of the good news, okay? What do I mean by that? We have the opportunity every single day of our life, we come in and out of people's lives, it is an opportunity to be witnesses to what God has done. Now when we talk about producing fruit, there are some people who have the privilege of seeing a relationship with Jesus Christ blossom in a person, but not all the time. Sometimes all we do is we plant a seed. My wife, uh, after the sermon on Sunday, um, just about again bearing fruit, she, you know, it can, there are a lot of Christians who run around with these notches on their belt. Look how many people I brought into relationship with Christ. And that is so bogus, okay? First of all, somebody else probably claims him. Uh, I brought this person in relationship with Christ. No, I did. No, I did. So we're fighting over who actually brought the person to re relationship with Christ. Chances are they came into relationship with Christ 10 years ago, and maybe all you did is nurtured their faith a little bit further and a little bit deeper. Well, see, we all have the opportunity to plant little seeds, to water the ground, to cultivate around that plant that is growing. And so it's a team activity to bring somebody into relationship with Christ. I'm a Christian, I would say oftentimes, because of my mother. She planted a seed, but she's not the only one person who did that. I had a relationship with my brothers, with my pastor, with my wife, with a lot of other folks who nurture me and, and water me and plant seeds inside of my heart. There is no one person I can point to said, this person brought me to relationship with Christ. It's a team affair. And so your part in that might seem kind of tiny, but it is not, nonetheless important, and God is using you on all of those itinerant opportunities that you have to interact with somebody. And so if you're sitting here blowing your mouth off about, oh, politics and Donald Trump and Joe Biden... Where is Jesus in that? Who the heck cares? They're all going to be dead in 50 years and 20 years. Who cares? It's temporary and it's just politics. But Jesus lasts forever. See, I think we, this has been the problem this last year. We've gotten our, our, our tidy whities in such a bun about such unimportant things. And I know, well, there's justice. And you know what? There are some justice issues that we have as a country that we've got to address, and these are important. I'm not saying that there aren't. So don't hear me that I'm dismissing some of these things entirely. But what I am saying is we need our focus on this aspect of our lives, that you can be an itinerant preacher today of the good news, that doesn't mean that you pull out the Bible and smack a person over the head with what they need to believe. No, it means that just being a kind representative of Jesus Christ today and the opportunities that God has given you. See, that's what God did with Philip. This was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for him to be with this eunuch, and then the guy was gone, out of his life, in his life, gone, and out of his life. But in that opportunity, he took advantage of it to be an itinerant preacher of the good news. And I am telling you, most of your opportunities to represent Jesus Christ will be that itinerant type of thing where we just have a short time. Just plant a little seed. Make a difference. 
to be a positive representative of Jesus Christ. And if you're shooting your mouth off about stupid politics or other type of crappy things that, that are, are so unimportant, they're not going to hear of you. They're not going to hear about Jesus. They don't need to hear that. It's an opportunity to tell them that they are loved. That is the message that we carry. This is the good news that we share. You are loved because of what God has done for you in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the message that we carry with us when we go to the grocery store. How do we represent that? Through our kindness, through our caring of those around us, through that school board meeting when everybody else is screaming and yelling, through our kindness, our patience, the opportunity to listen to people. How do we represent Christ? Through that phone call that we have <laughs> with that person on the other line. My wife, let me just finish with this story. My wife was thinking very serious about this. How do I do this? Well, it's not exactly her wheelhouse to pull out the Bible and impress upon people what they have to believe but about Jesus Christ. However, we have again a, a, a cousin that we lost. We're very fond of. And uh, his wife, obviously struggling. He's about our age, and so we've had, you know, maybe a little, little bit older, but they've been in and out of our, our lives quite a bit over the years because they got married the same summer we did, and we had similar trajectories in our lives as far as uh, the events that occurred in our lives. And so uh, we'd see each other when we saw each other, family reunions, or we just had a real affinity for them. And uh, she decided to just send a picture of the blessing that we share on Sunday mornings uh, with our worship service. We have the benediction, and she just sent that picture to her cousin on, on Saturday morning, and her cousin shot an email back, or uh, a, a little text message back and said, you know, it was just a very hard day. And God really placed you in my life at the right time because I really needed to see this message. My wife was just being faithful to what she felt comfortable doing. How she could use her giftedness to be an itinerant messenger of the good news of Jesus. It was just a simple, positive, uplifting message that she shared at the time that her cousin truly needed it. This is what it means to be a messenger of the good news. So I'm asking you to be cognizant of this. Stop blowing your mouth off in public about things that are truly not important. It's about Jesus. And you are his representative. You have the privilege and the opportunity to touch somebody's life and transform it forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this example of Philip and this Ethiopian eunuch. What a wonderful story. And it's truly an example of what you would like us to do. I don't know there's too many Ethiopian eunuchs today. And too many of them stopped on the side of the road reading from the book of Isaiah in their chariot. That's not happening. But there's so many wonderful opportunities of people we may only see for just a moment. And we have the privilege of sharing good news, of being a representative of the hopefulness we find in Jesus Christ. And so let that be the foremost on our mind wherever we might be, so that these little seeds, this little nourishment might take place wherever we go. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Enjoy your celebration of Easter. <laughs>